And welcome in to this uh, Zoom affair. Pressbox and PressboxOnline.com present our discussion with two members of the uh, Baltimore Orioles operations team. And uh, joining me as my co-host, as always, is Gary Stein. Gary, how are you this evening? Great. How are you, Stanley? Good I'm to be great. with you. I'm great. We're joined by an old friend, T.J. Brightman, who is Senior Vice President and Chief Revenue Officer of the Baltimore Orioles, and Jennifer Grandal, who's Senior VP of Community Development and Communications. We welcome you both on for this discussion about the near-term and long-term future of something that's very near and dear to my heart and to a lot of people in Baltimore, and that's the Baltimore Orioles. I thank you both for taking time to join us tonight. How are you both? I'm doing well. I'm at the ballpark right now. I just walked uh, from the stands watching a, a couple innings of our intra-squad game, so I, I can't complain. I'm, I'm in I'm a good good spot. Thank who, you. Thanks for who, having us. Who won, the Orioles or the uh, Orioles? <laughs> We're still idea? playing. It's a They're mystery, but I know the Orioles are going to win. All right. Hey, before <laughs> we before we dig into to some interesting conversation tonight, I do want to ask you, Jennifer, I noticed everything you used to help run the Sarasota operation. If the Baltimore Orioles had never moved to Sarasota, is it highly unlikely that you would be working for the Baltimore Orioles? Because you're from Sarasota, correct? Yes, I'm, I am I actually live in Bradenton, Florida, right next to Sarasota, but I met the uh, John and Louis Angelos about 11 or so years ago, maybe it's 12 years now. And for certain, if uh, I had not been in Sarasota, right place, right time, right relationship that introduced me to them, and we we stayed connected all of these years. So it's it's definitely serendipitous, and I'm very grateful. So let's get this out of the way, though, TJ. Had you not worked for the Baltimore Orioles, you might not, and and gotten to know John Angelos, you might not be in your position right now. Uh, I think that Jennifer and I have uh, something in common. I think it just shows that uh, relationship building is very important. And, um, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to be part of the organization for, for over 17 years in a number of different capacities. Um, you know, back uh, 17 years ago when I was there as an employee and, and now back as part of the senior leadership team. So before we d really dig in, I just want to say that this is a very different time for the Baltimore Orioles. You know, Peter Angelos bought the team out of a bankruptcy uh, situation back in 1993. And up until about two years ago, it was Peter's vision of running this, this baseball team. That's kind of changed now. And the fact that there are five senior vice presidents, including yourself, Mike Elias, who's the executive VP in baseball, Greg Bader, who's the senior VP, of administration and experience, and Lisa Tolson. It's a very different sort of, uh, more of a vertical, um, uh, excuse me, more of a horizontal way of running an organization than Peter had. And it's John's vision, isn't it? You know, it, it is John's vision. And, you know, Jen can certainly weigh in on this as well. But, you know, I think that, um, you know, John realized that, you um, he wanted to do things a little bit differently. He wanted to take uh, more of a, a, a standoffish approach and uh, certainly being involved at a different level um, and you know, attracted uh, folks like us um, and others in the organization. All, uh, while you know, Mike Elias was the, was the, the big pivotal piece, uh, you know, Greg Bader and Lisa Tolson have been with the organization for, I guess, collectively about 50 plus years. Jennifer and I are, are the newbies um, but what, what's really been assembled is a really special group. And, um, you know, we're just, we're just really happy to be part of it. Jennifer, hey, if I want to just real quick. Go ahead, Gary. Go ahead. I, I think as we talk about baseball for, for 2020, and Jennifer, I'll kind of go to you first on this one. You know, obviously, there's going to be a lot of things missing this year, uh, not the least of which is 102 games, we're only playing 60. But I think the most visible thing that we're going to be missing is fans in the stands, clearly. And that is a huge change from what anybody is used to in any sporting event at any time. So my question to you is, how do you connect to those fans? I would assume that if that's the most visible thing that's going to be missing, that has to be at least one of the most important things for you to address. 
Absolutely. I think even when we broke for spring training, we recognized that we had to really pivot in the way that we were planning to do our season. You know, we stopped mid 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 stream. Uh, you know, had to change horses immediately, um, which is is definitely not ideal. But we started generating a lot of online content for our fans. Uh, we started doing a lot more community work, um, connecting our fans with players in more of a personal way, um, kind of seeing really what they were doing at home, and to prepare for the season. And now that the season is upon us, we're going to launch uh, something called O's at Home. And it really is going to be various ways that we connect with our fans in some of those nostalgic things that they're used to. Um, some of this is in development right now, but also introducing some some new concepts so that they feel like they're a part of the action. And, and the reality is that baseball is the live sport in America right now. And, and in a couple of weeks, when we have our opening day, uh, we are it. And uh, because fans, we can't make up for that experience 100%, but we know how important it is and we don't want to miss a beat. And I also think we're going to be open to some of our feedback from fans. We've we've started a lot. One of the one of the biggest changes I think in the in the club in the past couple of years has been some of the data driven decision making that we've had uh, that we've implemented. We have uh, you know fans that we bring together and, and seek their opinion. And I know that we'll be going um, to them a, a lot you know this this summer. But we're going to do everything we can to make them feel like they're a part of Orioles magic. And TJ, you know, you came on as the chief revenue officer. And by the way, full disclosure, and Stan, you know as well as anyone, TJ and I, and we all have known each other for over 20 years. We've yep. worked together in many different capacities. In fact, TJ and I worked together at the Orioles back in 05. Thank you for bringing me on, TJ. Um, but it, this has got to be... Uh, a fabulous opportunity for you uh, to come back to the team that you loved and you loved growing up as a kid, but in a completely different mindset, perhaps, and pivot that Jennifer just mentioned, just really two or three months into the job. I mean, your world, total, everybody's world totally changed. Yeah, I mean, you look, I, you guys know me um, and, and others do as well. I mean, I've bled orange and black since I came out of the womb, okay? It's just kind yeah, of- uh, Absolutely. It's been, it's been part of me for a long time. Uh, and as I that's said, when, before, that's you know, when you're not, that's when you're not rooting for Penn State. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Blue I just and white want to be or, clear of that. Blue and white <laughs> or orange and black. Right. Right. It's, I, it's kind of a balance, but you know, I mean, it's, it's really, I have to pinch myself. Okay. Because being part of this organization um, in a number of different capacities over the past 17 years, as I mentioned, has been great, but this is really a special time. And I think Jennifer would say the same thing. I mean, we really, this is such a great group. Um, you know, bet between the five of us, but also with others in the organization have, that have been there uh, for longer than we have, okay, and, and have so many great ideas and are super creative people. Um, it's really, really energetic. I mean, there's, th there's no script for this type of season, right? There's mm -hmm. no one has on their resume that they've worked in a pandemic. So that's been a challenge. But I think if there is a silver lining, and I'm a silver lining kind of guy, it's that we, we certainly have, have, have uh, found out a little bit more about one another than maybe we knew before March, March the 12th. And um, we're, you know, we're continuing to collaborate and take this day to day, week to week, month to month. And 110 days later, we're, we're getting ready to play baseball in about a week. So that's kind of where we are. I want to ask you both a, a, like a two prong question. Number one, obviously you're you're a uh, glass ha uh, half full more than half empty silver linings and I think Jennifer you're much the same how frustrating though is it and what was going to be a season that that you may have used the ball club as a little bit of a laboratory to try new things with fans how frustrating on one hand is it that that's all been taken away from you and let me get in the second part in watching the NFL draft this year on television, which had never been done on Zoom, everything that came out afterwards is, hey, we may tr keep trying this. In other words, you, how many things do you think you may stumble into that may end up being the next big thing in Birdland? And I'll let you both go on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take the first part of that question. You know, um... I, I, I do feel that that this has has been a real learning experience for us. And I really don't like to look at the short term. 
I even think with us as a management team, none of what we're doing is about short term, short, short term results. And if you have that mindset, and I think that's applicable to everybody that that's going through this right now, because because baseball is a microcosm of the of the rest of sure. society, right? Um, I'm I'm a long term thinker, and I see this as a, a test. It's a challenge, and we're going to get through it. And and honestly, leaning on each other during this process has been very invaluable. It's been exhausting. There's no doubt about it. Uh, TJ today, in fact, was mandating me to take a vacation day uh, because <laughs> we we don't have time for those types of conversations. Um, but I feel like it's not what we would have wanted, but we're here. We have we accept it and we move on and we think about what's next. And I think that talking about what we may adapt uh, adopt, I'm sorry, for for future. I think TJ can talk a little bit more to that. But we're one thing is we're very open to, to what what develops this season and what we do. I mean, one one thing I will say two nights ago, I wanted to say something to Chris Davis. We had a camera at batting practice in the in the turtle. Yeah. And it, you may have seen it on our our all of our social media. And it was showing Chris Davis taking batting practice in that live perspective that had more views, more, you know, some of the things that you're having, you know, having to do in this situation are ending, ending up being really great content. And it's the mother of invention, right? All yeah. of this ingenuity, all the things that are happening. So um, I feel like, you know, we might try some of this and, and give fans that sort of up close experience, even though they're not here. TJ? I, you know what? I, Great I, answer. I, I'm a I'm a glasses half full kind of guy, right? And and Jennifer's the same. Uh, we can only control what we can control. Um, and you know this situation this year. I mean, we're we're doing some things now, and we're planning some things for the season. That um, I can tell you from the corporate partnership standpoint, communicating with and doing outreach with our partners. Um, I had a conversation with one of my coworkers today and said, you know, when this is all over with. You know, this has worked really well to kind of have more check-ins with our partners. Not that not that you can ever replace face-to-face -face meetings, okay? And that's how you build relationships. We all know that. But people's time is valuable. Uh, gives us the opportunity to work on other things. And you know, you can you can have a have a Zoom meeting with someone. You can share a screen. You can talk about ideas, and you can accomplish quite a bit in in a short period of time. Uh, you know, Jennifer's right. This has been um, a uh, an exhausting effort since since March the twelfth. Uh, the the five of us were in the warehouse until the wee hours of the morning. Uh, you know, triaging in that in that moment, and you know, 110, 113, 15 days later, we're we're right back at it. But I, I think I think we've learned a lot as a group. Uh, we've learned a lot about one another, and it's what Jennifer said. This was never about one season. It's about uh, you know what we're going to build and build a you know bring a World Series back back to Baltimore. And, and I have to say, I really, I, I appreciate that, that TJ has that same perspective. And I was always really excited to be here. And um, to, I was felt honored and flattered to have been selected for this role, but I've never been prouder in my entire 22 year career as a professional since graduating from college to be part of an organization because of the way that our organization has conducted itself, how our team has rallied. I've just never been, I've never felt a greater sense of pride and being in this clubhouse, uh, I can tell you that it is an unbelievable um, machine that's running right here. It was a monumental task to get it ready. We implemented a 100-page operations manual that is so detailed and, and so precise, and we've kicked it up a notch. And to be part of, of, of a group of people that care that much about, about the outcome here, because we realize what's at stake, uh, both in baseball and otherwise, I've never been prouder. I, I think there's one other thing to add, and, and that is um, the support that we get from not only the Angelos family, but the partnership group as a whole, uh, because without them, this wouldn't be possible. You know, they, they've selected us to do the job, but they're letting us, letting us do our jobs. And, and that's, that's just super rewarding. Uh, you know, the five of us collaborate nearly on everything. Uh, and, and that is, that's, I think a little bit of a testament to who we are, but um, you know, we can be selfless with one another, which is super important. Yeah. Guys, let's talk a little bit about the O's fan experience, kind of what Jennifer was alluding to before. 
the, the television experience this year. Since fans are not going to have the ability, unless things change, and hopefully they do, fans to come into the stadium to experience baseball, let's talk about what they can see on television. So my question is, you know, usually in a normal situation, you would see promos for bobblehead nights coming up and, you know, this event and that event. Certainly the camera would pan into the stands and show, you know, funny fan shots and things that are going on, you know, in the stands. We're not going to see any of that this year. So from a fan's perspective, when they watch television, and I'm sure you've had these conversations, what can a fan expect to have to that time to have that filled up with something else? Like what will you replace that with so the fan is still connected to the game, obviously? Well, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take that first. I, you know, we're, we're, we're in the business. Look, we're, we're a baseball team. We're an entertainment company and we're in the business of, of content creation. Okay. So there's a lot of content that we create uh, throughout the week and obviously leading up to a baseball game. So you can count on that, that same, uh, that those same platforms that will be amped up obviously during a game uh, using the, the, uh, the ballpark app, uh, obviously using our, our broadcast talent, uh, you know, calling the game. We're, we're still up until the, the, the last hour having discussions on what that final presentation is going to be um, and what that's going to look like with our partner and, and regional sports network in Masson. Um, but, but fans that are, that are you know, tuning in to Masson or listen to the games on the radio, um, you know, we want them to be engaged and have the same experience uh, as if they were, were at the park. Sure, we're not going to be promoting, uh, as you said, Gary, you know, some of the special promotions and the bobblehead nights, but we've got some surprises that we're, we're working on behind the scenes uh, that we'll be rolling out, um, you know, this season to kind of keep the fans engaged and, and really building towards 2021. Wait a minute, I'm just finding out, we're not going to get Hawaiian shirts this year? <laughs> yeah, well, you know what, we'll have to, we'll have to give you a range back. Yeah, nothing? <laughs> yeah we, you can have a virtual bird appearance, though. May I make a plug for that? Uh, well, you okay. donate uh, a little a little tiny bit of money to charity. You can have the Oriole bird visit you for your birthday party or your company party, a Zoom meeting. So uh, all virtual. But but that's yeah, something but Jennifer, that we did this summer. But Jennifer, is he is he going to say anything? <laughs> he looks great on camera though. he's not going to say anything hey, no I, he's not he's never going to say anything that's one right, thing we know for sure <laughs> i wanted to ask you both something about the the elias involvement in the five person group um it's something new uh I, i'm i was always amazed to find out how little general managers really knew about the overall operation of a team where the, the revenue streams are, how much revenue they need. But, but likewise, you guys are getting up close and talking to Mike Elias, who's running the, the team and the, the, the product on the field. How beneficial is this, this kind of relationship where Mike is involved with you guys and you're involved in hearing his insights into the way he runs that side of the team? Jennifer, I'll start with you. Yeah, we're we're all we're we're definitely interrelated. So the idea of it being separate to me is foreign because I haven't worked in a baseball organization where we've had that separation. Uh, Michael Elias is right here. He's about fifty yards away from where I am right now, and I think, you know, he brings certainly the baseball perspective, but he's a very intelligent guy. And he has an opinion and he wants the team to be successful. And he asks us for advice on topics and we ask him for advice. Uh, we strategize together and we realize, you know, with what TJ is doing, corporate partnership, Birdland membership, ticket sales, all of those things help support us, uh, our ability to, to, to buy a better baseball player and put together a better baseball team. There's, they're related. The work that we're doing in the community with players, uh, how, how could I be effective in the clubhouse asking a player to, to engage in a community activity if the general manager isn't bought into it? And that also goes with the manager, Brandon Hyde. And I can tell you that this spring, we had an incredible meeting with the players in the clubhouse in Sarasota to kind of lay the groundwork for our vision going forward, what the goals of the organization are. And Brandon teed it up 
you know, we had Brian Roberts there. We had Jeff Conine. He was he was there as a guest mm -hmm. coach coach to talk about what our priorities are in the community and how they can be involved. And not only that, but that's that's part of our organizational culture. So if he's not aware of what we're doing, I just don't think it would work. And, you know, he and I were just talking about baseball and how baseball is going to be affected by some of the, the, the unfortunate events this year with the minor league season canceled. And, uh, you know, again, this is a long-term proposition. So yep. I, I think we, we're going to, we're going to realize that there's going to be some bumps in the road and we're not, we're not exactly uh, going to necess necessarily be on target because of this, but the, the plan hasn't changed. He's building a, a winning baseball team. DJ, do you want to take a moment to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, here's the thing. Uh, Mike's a smart guy. He went to Yale. I mean, he's not as smart as a Penn State guy, but I mean, he's pretty smart. <laughs> uh, Mike, Mike is UMB, UMBC over here. Okay, M Mike is Mike, Mike Towson State. There we go, Towson University. Mike yep. is um, Mike from Jump Street. Uh, you know, when when uh, when this team was formed back in October. He reached out to to all of us, but he reached out to me because he, you know, we didn't know each other, and it was super important uh, for us to kind of get off to the on the right start. I mean, look, he he's he's got a track record, um, and he recognized that obviously revenue and baseball play a key role together. And um, you know what what we're able to do uh, with our corporate partners and our fans on the ticket partnership side help him build a baseball team. Baseball is expensive; we all know that. Um, so I think that. Having him in those conversations, it's been it's been fantastic for for both of us, uh, for all of us to be. It's you know it's like it's like sales and programming at a television or a radio station. You have to sort of be yeah. in sync, and um, it's been it's been really great. Guys, uh, take me to opening day for just a minute. On the twenty fourth, you guys will open up in Boston. Uh, first time the Orioles opened up in Boston in I've, maybe since I was born. I don't know, fifty plus years. Uh, but then on the 29th, we open up at home uh, here against Florida. You know, opening day here in Baltimore is a local national holiday. If there is such a thing, cut school, skip school, go to the game, you know, do everything necessary. Oh, Camden Yards looks beautiful, all decked out in orange and black. Players come out, outfield. The whole park is utilized beautifully by the Orioles on opening day. Jennifer, can you just take us to this opening day? And I'm not asking you to give away secrets or anything, but... Obviously, that's going to change. Yes, he is. But how do you see it? What's going to happen? <laughs> I'd rather talk about the Heinz 57 ketchup recipe because that would probably be easier <laughs> than this question. <laughs> I I have to say, it makes me kind of sad, you know, just to hear you saying that because I know. We, we know we're not going to have that experience. But here's the really good and exciting part. I haven't experienced that yet, so I don't have that nostalgia. <laughs> However, um, we know we, we, we've talked about this. TJ Gregg and I met last week and, you know, outline the challenge, right? So we have this nostalgia that we we want to give people a little bit of that experience in, in the you know television experience on Masson. Um, but we also want to be present in what we're facing as a country, as Baltimore, and, and recognize that people have a lot on their mind right now. And we want to do that in a really optimistic and positive way. Um, so I, I think that you can count on a lot of familiar voices and a lot of familiar um, visuals, but it, it, there's no way to replace that opening day experience. The only thing I can say is 2021, we have our schedule. We're going to have an opening day in the park in 2021. And so we're, that's, all, that's what we're gonna focus on for, for uh, that experience. I wanted to ask you both about that. The, the, it was so odd the way baseball released the 2020 schedule, like last Monday or Tuesday. And then Thursday, they announced, I, I like almost read it and I said, yeah, I know the schedule came out, but they've released next season's schedule. Right. How much of that do you think was to lift people that work the jobs you do in organizations to really say, hey, baseball is going to be here long term? Because I found it very interesting. TJ? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take that one. You know, I, I think I was one of the first ones. I think I may have sent Jennifer a note or Greg a note and said, you know, this may cause some confusion. Because as you said, hey, I already got the schedule. And then people start looking at the dates and, the, you know, they're, they're screwed up. I, I think, you know, I don't, I don't think that was a necessarily a, a conscious decision by the league. But, um, 
look, baseball is part of the fabric of America. And, you know, it, to, to give the fans hope that, you know what, we're, we're not only playing a 60 game season, it's shorter than we would like, but you know, 2021, we've got a full season at least planned. So I, I think there was probably some thought that went into that. And it also gives the clubs the opportunity to plan yeah. uh, because, you know, typically I will say this, you know, from a, from a purely a fan base ticket partnerships, you know, we're usually starting the plan for the following year in the late summer. So yeah. it really isn't that early. Right. Interesting answer. Gary. Yeah. Um, game day experience for you guys, you know, in a normal season, you'd all be there, right? I mean, TJ and I, you know, existed back in 04 every game, pretty much 81 uh, this year, 30. But uh, do you just out of curiosity, do you plan on being at every home game? Are you working from zoom right now? We're working like, what's the workflow? What's the work um, location for you guys like now on a daily basis? Uh, Jennifer first. Yeah, I, I'm at the ballpark right now. I've been here every day since the players reported post my intake test. I'm getting tested every two days uh, for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I will be here for every home game. I will likely be on the road once or twice this season. I haven't decided yet. I'm trying to limit um, that, uh, the number of staff that's traveling with the team. Um, I have a PR professional who will be traveling with the team for every road game, but we have literally um, outside of the players, which is our tier one group, we have only 38 people in our tier two group. And that includes some trainers, medical staff, uh, and then a few a baseball operations staff, and then a few that are um, essential like public relations staff. That, those are the only people that are working day to day in the clubhouse. And then we have what's called tier three. And those are the people that make um, the game happen. Uh, a lot of the grounds crew, but they don't have direct contact with the players. So their separation and uh, also our facilities crew, our vice president of operations, Troy Scott is, is in tier three. So those several tiers and our organization kicked it up a notch because that's how we, we roll at the Orioles. And we added tier four and tier five. And those are people that are really working remotely that are not even coming to the ballpark because we're trying to work from home, as you said, for the Zoom experience. And, and TJ can speak a little bit more on that, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm working I'm working from home and I have been since uh, March 13th. Um, and, you know, you, for all of us around the game, we don't, we don't do it to work from home to watch the games on television or listen to them on the radio. We want to be around the experience. That's, that's a tough part for me, but I, 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 you know, look, I realize that my role with the organization, uh, unlike Jennifer's, where she is on the ground every day and responsible for our communications and working with the players and working with the, the rest of the organization, uh, that I'm not, I don't need to be there in that capacity. So it's tough and it's, 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 but this is the replacement. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm working from my home now and, and that's, that's kind of how it is, but it's, um, it's, it's certainly a challenge, but it's something that we just know we have to deal with in, in the year 2020. Hey, we're really appreciative of the time tonight because we could go on another hour asking you Absolutely. specifics. But I do want to close with two things that I want to throw at you. The, the Community Hero Awards, is there any way, shape, or form those can exist this season because we live in a time where normal people have been doing some heroic things. Uh, that's number one. So Jennifer, that's, I know your area. So. Yeah. So, so Stan, I'm glad you mentioned that we, uh, again, another pivot, we switched everything up, uh, in May and started with our virtual Birdland heroes. And we've been awarding $5,000 grants to organizations that are on the front line responding to the COVID-19 crisis, whether it's the Maryland Food Bank, um, organizations that are working on education at home, um, and, and those will continue all throughout season. So we've recognized, we've done it a little bit differently, this, this sort of virtual experience, yep. where we've identified groups of people. So the helpers would be an example of one group that we recognize, and those are all those volunteers that are working at the food bank. The, all those, those people that are working from Camden Yards this, at, with the Salvation Army delivering 10,000 meals per day to vulnerable seniors. Um, we, we've recognized our frontline workers, and that includes not just healthcare workers, but the, the, our friends working in grocery stores that are keeping us safe, the delivery workers. So we're going to introduce, I already know what it is uh, well, for opening week, but I can't tell you it's a secret, but it's so another those, group and it's really good. 
Will those be released during the broadcast? Will, will fans at home watch a game and, and in, be introduced in a video form? And I actually think in some ways, we were already planning on changing Birdland Heroes for our yep. regular plan, but this what one thing that's going to be different is we're going to connect you a little bit more to the individual. So you'll hear a little bit more of their story. We've also been inviting them on the grind with Melanie. That's Newman, great. Yep. So they can hear the stories and see this great work because we want to inspire people to be more uh, community oriented, oriented during this time and help a friend. Cause we need that so much right now. Great, great idea. And TJ, I'll throw this one to you. And Gary was around too. 1995, September 5th and 6th. Uh, it's one of the greatest moments in Oriole history and in baseball history was Cal Ripken uh, tying and then breaking Lou Gehrig's record for consecutive games. Is the club going to be, I know, I know next year, for example, they've already announced the Mets are going to play the Yankees on 9-11. Uh, and I know we play the Yankees, I believe, uh, this year on September 5th. Is the club going to be able to do anything to make a big deal out of Cal Ripken's 25th anniversary of breaking Lou Gehrig's record? Well, well, first of all, the fact that it's 25 years makes me feel like I'm... Yeah, you were a kid. I'm, you were yeah, a kid. I was, I was, you know exactly how old you were, TJ. I was 25 <laughs> years old. So, you know, and I, I joke about this. Uh, I turned 50 on March the, March the 12th, and the next day the world changed. So my next yeah. 50 years are, you know, mm -hmm. post-COVID. Um, yeah, the, again. the answer is, and look, you're, I know you're trying to get secrets out of us tonight, and that's okay. You want an exclusive. <laughs> uh, the Baltimore Orioles will certainly be recognizing that commemorative uh, anniversary uh, with Cal. And, um, you know, we had planned, obviously, to do something on September 6th uh, yeah. prior to the pandemic. And uh, we'll be doing something, um, you know, leading up to that week and, and celebrating on the day itself. But, yeah, I mean, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't do that. But it, it's... This season is different. I mean, there will be some virtual elements for sure, uh, but it's it's obviously part of the part of the plans, and and we we wouldn't have a season without being able to trip, have, raise our cap to Cal. We really appreciate it, Jennifer Grandal, Senior Great VP of guys. Community Development and Communications, and TJ Brightman, and a young friend at fifty years of age, Senior are. VP and Chief Revenue Officer. We thank you for coming on. Really do appreciate. It. For having us go okay. O's. Yep. Pleasure. I'm, yeah, pleasure. I'm excited, well. man. We're starting in a week. Uh, for Gary Stein, I'm Stan a fan from Pressbox and PressboxOnline.com. We'll see you next time. See ya. Thank you.